Hey guys, so I just got done listening to um, a message from David Benjamin and in that video he really gives a perspective on the New Testament ministry, the New Covenant, the Old Covenant and puts them in proper context so you know for our understanding. So after watching that the Lord gave me an illustration um, that helped me to see you know how we as believers are part of a new covenant, um, not a new covenant, I'm sorry, the New Testament ministry, okay, which is, um, has nothing to do with the new covenant. The new covenant was for the Jews, okay, just like the old covenant was given to the Jews, it was covenant between God and Israel, um, just as he had promised the new covenant will be for them as well. But the new covenant will be one that will be fulfilled in the, his millennial reign. Um, but I'm going to explain all of that. So let me give the illustration. So down here is like the base level. And then there's a mid level. And then there's this top level. So down here, uh, this is where sinners, you know, um, are. This is where we're still in our sinful state. Still have the Adamic um, sin upon us. Though pretty much these are unbelievers, okay? Uh, unbelieving Gentiles, unbelieving Jews, all right, or just not perfected, not um, blameless or righteous in their own um, strength, in their own flesh. They're they're still in their flesh, okay. And the only way for them to get here, this is where Christ is. This is where Christ is. So I'm explaining that this top level is Jesus Christ. This is God. He is the, he's righteousness, he's holiness, he's perfection. And this is where uh, sinners lie right here, okay, who haven't been um, justified or, and haven't been sanctified by the Lord, Jesus. Here we have the law and we have, um, or the old covenant, all right. Now, in time past, the Jews... Um, or in time past, God presented the law to the Jews, to, you know, uh, Israel then. And so he presented it to Moses and Moses, um, brought it, came down from, um, is it Mount Sinai? And, and pretty much God was like, this is a standard of righteousness though it's right now it's a faded glory. It was glorious in its own right, but it's, it's now faded. Um, so, and it's, it's actually been, it's, it's faded. It's, it's passed away right now. It's like null and void for, because we have the substance Christ now. He has, he has died for the sins of humanity. He has been buried. He has rose again. So this standard of righteousness, it's done away with. Okay. Now. He presented this and said, hey, this is a, a standard of righteousness that, you know, I would, I would require I, or I require from you humans <laughs> and, um, can you keep it? And then they're, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. We could, we could, we could keep it. We can keep it. We can obey it. Yeah. Give it to us. We'll, we'll, we'll follow it to the letter. Right. So now. They tried, they tried, but they failed woefully because once you fail in one of the commandments, you fail in all and, you know, the 10 commandments and all the there's Levitical laws as well. There's so, there's so much, you know, to the law and they failed. They kept, they kept failing. And even the simple 10 commandments, like the moral law, they, they failed it. Right. And, um, and that brings me to a point where, a point that uh, David Benjamin had made. He said that people think that the Holy Spirit is, um, helps them to, like, points them to the law or helps them to, to keep it or what, or any of that. And that the Holy Spirit actually leads them away from the law to gain Christ, like, Right now, the Holy Spirit, that's a mistake people make that, oh yeah, you have to keep the law to be for, for righteousness. 
you you know, yeah, you believe in Jesus, but you got to keep the law to show that you love God or that you um, are righteous in his eyes or you have. So and and the Holy Spirit in the New Testament ministry, the Holy Spirit is 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 not coming upon people to keep this any at all. And even then he didn't, he never, in fact, he never came upon someone to keep this. This was never to be, um, something perpetual, um, for, uh, uh, for righteousness, for people to look to, for man to look to the law for righteousness, because Christ was supposed to be our righteousness, our holiness, because he's the only one righteous. He's the only one. We're fallen. This could not do away with that sin. This could never do away with the, like, the, see this gap? This, look at this long gap. Like, you have to be Superman to, like, up here, you know. There's no way you can get here from here. This didn't get us here at all. It didn't. Okay, and people have forget that um, this cannot save you. This doesn't make you righteous or holy. This and it never did. It was, um, it was given to show us that we need a savior, that we need Jesus Christ. We cannot be holy or righteous on our own, because this is stuff that you had to do, and in your own strength you could never do as. As fallen man, as in this body of sin, in this flesh, you could never keep the law. And some people that think, oh yeah, I keep the laws outwardly. Jesus now said, hey, the laws are not just about outward, you know, outward manifestations of, oh, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't do this. How about the inward? How about lust? How about um, just thinking something that's, you know, crazy? You've sinned, you know, what you you know you're supposed to do and you don't do it sin there's so much sin that is in the inner the inner man that you can't get away from that you have so many thoughts and definitely a lot of them are sinful thoughts and not just in because not because you're purposely doing that and it's not having to do with sexual sins or or I want to kill somebody or murder someone you know there's there's innate we're in this body of sin just having this flesh at, at in its state as it is now is just sinful, right? And that's why we're going to have redeemed bodies in due time, at the appointed time. So the point is, this doesn't save. This is this is this righteousness is a fading glory that it it it's not perfection, and God requires perfection. He just, he was like saying, "Can you even keep this?" And they're like, "Oh yeah." And, and God's like looking at him like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna see you try." And they failed. So that's why now as as Christians, to look to this that was a fading, that has faded away, is like foolishness to God. The Holy Spirit is not going to tell you, come and keep this. He's going to remind you that you are in Christ. You are in Christ. That brings me to the point where believers who have, um, who are, you know, believers in the church, in, in part of the body of Christ, who are both Gentiles and Jews, you know, body of Christ is comprised of Gentiles and Jews. They are in Christ. They're the body of Christ. Christ is here and we're his body. So we're here hidden in Christ. So the perfection we now have is his perfection, his, his glory, his righteousness, his, his holiness. We are, do you see, we are above the law. We are now in Christ here, not here. Why subject yourself to this? When you have this, when you've gained Christ, why subject yourself to the law? This is, this is old covenant. And now you might say, okay, well, how about the new covenant that talked about? Well, that is to the Jews. This old covenant was not even for Gentiles. So why even subject yourself to something that wasn't for you? But let's say you're a Jew, a believing Jew. This is not for you, even because you're in you're you're part of the body of Christ. So now let's just looking at the covenants themselves. There's old covenant and then there's a new covenant given to Israel. So these are promises. This old is done away with. Here's it. How about the new covenant? How about the new covenant? Well, the new covenant is here as well, but this is not can. It's not the old covenant. 
the new covenant has been promised to the Jews and they're going to be living like Christ did in glory on earth as mortals okay this is going to be promised this promise to them during the millennial kingdom the millennial reign of Christ on earth okay this is the new covenant here is not um it's not for the church okay in fact to be honest the church is a greater glory i would say like the new covenant since it's more since they're still mortals they're not glorified like this but let's just say that they're like right here and then here's the um the church and and, and christ you know they're you know they're one they're here and then here's like the new covenant because they're going to be this is the millennial kingdom where they'll be walking under the you know um, with the power of the Holy Spirit, blameless, spotless, without, you know, sin because, hey, because, um, because, well, they'll be, they'll be walking in righteousness and holiness, um, not of their own power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, like this supernatural, um, is it, never before seen, we haven't seen this, okay, but this will be activated, during the millennial kingdom for the Jews, you will see them. They're going to really be like the light of the world in that, you know, um, on earth. All right. That was actually what, uh, God had, had, um, destined for them because then the nations will come to Jerusalem and they're going to see a people for, um, living in the power of the Holy Spirit and in his, in, in God's righteousness and holiness as mortals. And, they were God's chosen people and they, the, the world will see them, that nation of Israel, the Jewish people. So at that time, and they're going to be a city on a hill, uh, um, a, 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 a light to the nations in that time, really. Um, because God's hand is upon them, right? His mighty hand. And so um, the new covenant, so that's what the will is for the Jews for that time period. We don't see this right now. They're not walking in that in that glory right now. Okay, all right. So, for, so let's let's go back to the present. So we're not supposed to go to the old covenant, and we shouldn't mistaken as as Christians to mistaken that okay, we're part of the new covenant. So we have to be walking in you know supernaturally in holiness and righteousness. We can't be sinning. How can you know? we're not supposed to sin and and um you're gonna think okay well i'm supposed to have the laws in my heart that's the, that's a supernatural thing that the, the laws of god will be written in their hearts so they will not sin against them like literally not sin not try not to sin like literally not sin at all i mean satan satan's gonna be bound for a thousand years right he's not even gonna be in the place so there'll be no temptation so it's going to be possible at that time by the power of the holy ghost and you might think, oh, don't we have the power of the Holy Ghost now, right? But he, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in this time is a different ministry. Um, it's more of a hidden ministry. It's more of an intimate one, um, not flashy, showy, to, with signs and wonders in that way. Um, there was a taste of the signs and wonders um, with the the day of Pentecost. And that was to the, you know, the believing Jews in Jerusalem where God said you tarry. So we saw these kind of like manifestations, uh, a taste, a taste, okay, uh, because we're still in this um, church period of time. Okay, so now we have those three levels. So my purpose of this illustration is that we're, you know, this is perfection. This is where God would have us be hidden in him, just acknowledging that our righteousness is not of ourselves. Is not of our is not of our is not of the law, it's not of ourselves, it's not of the law. It is in Christ. It is of Christ. His righteousness, his holiness, holiness is imputed on us. We're justified, sanctified in Christ. So don't look to the law for any of that. So that's just what I wanted to illustrate. Hopefully it was helpful. I love you guys. You take care. Bye bye.